Hey there, I just wanted to record a video that kind of detailed some of the inking techniques I demonstrated the last uh, or a couple of Saturdays ago in one of the uh, Patreon only uh, Google Meet sessions. Uh, so I wanted to try to record this again for those you may have missed it or just uh, those who would like review. I just wanted to share some of my techniques of learning to ink. Uh, again, like I so said, the first time I inked one of my sketches like this, uh, I after I was done inking it or even during inking it, I was like, wow, it's it's so horrible. My sketch looks so much better than my, my inking. Uh, but now I've gotten to the point now I feel my, my inking looks better than my sketches. I still enjoy the, uh, the energy that's in a sketch like this. But uh, ultimately, uh, if you want to eventually get to color it, or you want a nice, clean cartoon style, inking is important. It's a good uh, skill set to build upon. And I'm going to uh, show some of the basics that I've learned over time uh, on, on inking. So first thing, I'm just going to hide this for now. And let's talk about uh, a little bit of the basics. One thing that helps with inking is understanding your stroke habit. And most people's stroke habits are about the same. Uh, the best way you can see what your stroke habit is is just pick a brush. Right now I'm going to be using my favorite inking brush, which is the uh, one of the Fresco Vector brushes, the basic round. Uh, I'm going to reset it to its default. and But I do like to increase the smoothing on it. This helps me with, uh, uh, you know, stroke wobble and jitter a little bit. So it is, it's, it's kind of a cheat, but it helps uh, create a smooth clean uh, line otherwise but you still uh, it's good to practice uh, control of that and I'll get into an exercise we can do uh, later that helps you with that but for right now let's just talk about uh, stroke habit so I'm just going to draw a few lines and as I draw these lines notice where I start and end and how my stroke looks afterwards let me back up a little bit let's just do several in the same direction You'll notice that uh, in my uh, strokes that I've created here, my stroke habit is I seem to start out very uh, light and then I uh, get heavier with my stylus in the end. So I end up with a uh, natural line variation of thin to thick by this direction. Uh, and so I'm going to leverage that It's uh, so I don't really have to change my habits. It, it is possible if you're playing with your stylus to train yourself to you know, choose when you want to go th thick and thin, thick again, light again, uh, you know, it's you can do that, uh, and I, it is a good practice to do is to try to control the pressure you're putting on your stylus and control your variation. But I found uh, to create the the cleanest inking experiences, just uh, leverage your own uh, stroke habit like that because you want to do uh, nice, smooth, confident strokes when you're you're inking your your drawing. So let's get to it. Let's go back to our sketch here, and let's start a layer over top of it. I'm also going to reduce the opacity to sketch a little bit more uh, so it's easier to see my inking lines compared to the sketch. And let's use our stroke habit and start with something that's uh, kind of near far. Uh, this gives us, uh, by using our stroke habit, we can use thinner lines that, on items that are further from the uh, person's view and that then become thicker as the item is closer to the person view. So a good example is this, uh, the pig character's arm. Uh, his hand is a little further away, and his shoulder is closer to the camera. Uh, so we'll start with my stroke habit. I'm going to start down by the hand, because I'm going to be, I'm going to have, I have a lighter stroke when I first start out. Notice where I'm starting each time. I'm starting on sections that are probably the furthest away. And then I'm getting a little heavier as I get up the arm. Now we got up here, uh, his shoulder is kind of going to go just the opposite over here. is a little bit further from the camera, and this is kind of sticking out towards the camera over here. So I'm going to uh, start over here with my thin stroke and then get thicker as I come forward. On top of that, uh, this uh, shoulder pad kind of casts a shadow, so you can again leverage your your stroke habit to establish things like uh, areas a little thicker that may be uh, cast a shadow in another object. Now let's talk about uh, contour lines. Uh, right now I've been doing mostly what's called perimeter lines. Uh, with these perimeter lines, uh, that they're a little thicker than what I'm going to draw the internal the inside uh, contour lines like here. I am going to try to be a little lighter, but I'm still leveraging my stroke habit. 
uh, where you can see there's a little bit of variation. It's uh, thinner here and then thicker over here. Uh, one thing I don't uh, quite like my hand on there, I'm going to actually redo it. Go back down here. I didn't like how that turned out. There you go. I like that a little better. Let's draw some contour wrinkles. He has a, looks like a, I think I originally had a, a, a padding on his arm here, so we'll go ahead and add that in. It's a little thicker on the perimeter of the padding, and then it has some uh, contour stripes on it, which I'll go a little thinner. Let's draw this V. I'm going to uh, leverage the, uh, the vector brushes, uh, a vector trim, so I'm just going to just draw through to create this shape. Again, you can see I'm trying to go directions with my, uh, my stroke habit of what might be, for, starting what might be the furthest away to what could be the closest. And I did draw through. So now it's uh, vector trim, clean this up. Yeah, there's sometimes a bug with the vector trim lately with the latest uh, pre-release. We'll just manually erase those for now. We have our V-shape, or chevron. And there you have it. That's some basics to, uh, you know, using or inking your drawing. Uh, again, uh, the two basic ways to decide whether you're as thick or thin is either, for example, uh, distance, something that's further away is thinner, things that are closer or thicker. Again, here we have uh, thinner when it's further away, uh, thicker when it's closer. The other two is you can do additional uh, thickness, like here. This is the shoulder pad kind of cast a shadow on the arm, so I made it a little thicker there. Other areas where you can get a little thicker is like underneath his chin. We might have a, a little bit thicker line when up under the pig's chin and his nose, and then thinner line on top, but still coming a little thicker when it's closer to the camera view. Another example is the robot arm. You can do the same thing. Uh, I'm going. You can see how I'm doing my leveraging my stroke habit. Uh, here I have a, a more of a rounded object. And there's my line variation. Now you can go a little further sometimes, like for robots or metallic objects, it's uh, on top. There's the uh, the depth. You know, I, I have it darker sometimes when things are in a shadow area or below. But for like with a robot, there might be the shoulder is a little shiny. You could even choose the gap it. It gives the illusion that's kind of a shiny spot there on top. And then a little thicker for areas that are in shadow zones. And it's a lot of times, it's just a lot of experimentation. Other things you can do, uh, for example, uh, let's say this indention on his arm. Uh, notice I'm, I'm going to do two strokes to make this circle because I want uh, it to start thin here, close here, then I want a gap, close it in, do that again, actually I didn't like that. Another example, you can see I've done a gap here. Uh, that's how the light is probably hitting it, so it's a little thinner since this is indented. Uh, then uh, up here is, uh, in this area, is more of a shadow, and it's closer to the camera, so I leverage the thicker line to give the illusion of both. And then we can draw an internal line if we want to further uh, define that that's an in indented area. Now let's draw some contour lines here, keeping them thin, but still leveraging my stroke habit. Another contour line here. And then, since this is a joint, it can be a little thicker because it kind of casts shadows into itself. Uh, again, it's just uh, what you feel looks good. And there we have uh, inking of the robot shoulder. And and that's basically it. That's uh, that's the the really the gist of pretty much any inking is controlling your line variation, uh, learning your uh, stroke habits, and leveraging it so it makes it easy for you to decide. Because uh, normally, what I, how I used to ink, I would uh, say if I'm about to ink this ear, 
I would start here on the tip. I don't know why, it was just the old habit. It's also how I sketch. I would have a tendency to sketch that way, but if I've learned to train myself to pick areas that are further away first and then ink there to get my the illusion that, that something is coming closer to the viewer. Same here, even for the back of the ear, this is most likely a little further away and this is a little closer over here, so I'm gonna do that and let's come up there that way. Actually, let me do this with the ear. Other things you need to look for when you're inking that can really make a, you know your sketch look horrible compared to your, I mean, like your inking look horrible compared to your sketch uh, is uh, tangents and depth killers. Uh, a couple places where I could have had a tangent uh, let me see here. Let me get rid of a few extra lines. Uh, one possible tangent could have been right here when I brought up his shoulder pad. Uh, it could meet up with this line, and that is a, a bad tangent. We don't really want that. When it should clear uh, a separation, you could either uh, bring the line further out to definitely look up, look, try to find tangents, eliminate those. Uh, other things are depth killers. Common depth killers would be like uh, if I did these lines a little different, I didn't curve them quite right, uh, it'll start to look wrong. Uh, same thing down here. If I hadn't uh, curved, if I'd gone more straight across, your it starts to not look as good. You just uh, just keep an eye out for those depth killers. Make sure you've got your perspective and your design correct as best as possible. Uh, it's easy to mess up on those, uh, and the best way to check those two is maybe uh, mirror what you're doing. Let uh, both sides of the brain uh, kind of do a scan of your drawing to see if there's anything potential that might be wrong. You're, and again, uh, just keep doing that back and forth as you're doing your inking or your sketching even to try to see if uh, this, this looks correct. Uh, but even after all that, uh, you know, a week from now, I may look at this again and say, oh, darn, there's another error. There's a tangent I missed, or whatever, or there's a depth killer I just didn't get right. And that's quite all right. That happens. It just takes practice, takes time. Uh, I hope these uh, quick inking tips uh, will help you out. Uh, look forward to your feedback. Uh, thank you for watching.